All right, here we are at Germany finally, and we are at Form Next. And from here, let's go through and see two different things. One, what are some of the technologies coming out for some of our favorite brands like Elgu, Anycubic? Also, let's see what kind of cool stuff is in this other side of maybe more industrial manufacturing that we're not always exposed to. I hear that somewhere they're 3D printing a house, so I definitely want to go check that out. All right, so let's go see and go from there. Here we got Cyril from Lychee Slicer. Hey guys. Head of marketing. Here we go, it's one of the three exhibit halls. You should see the printer this thing goes to. <laughs> it's uh, you know, like the size of the building. So here's something that's really cool. This is coming out of Flash Forge. Now this printer is gonna cost around a couple, about a couple thousand dollars, what they're saying, they're not quite sure yet, and they won't know till maybe the end of the year. But this is the kind of prints that it does. And now also they print inside of a wax casing that's water solvable, so there's no support damage at all. This is gonna have that quality all the way around it. It does um, 20 UM layer height, but the XY is 200 UM, so you're definitely not getting quite the same accuracy on the XY. Uh, as much as you're getting on the Z with that uh, higher quality. If you look at the specs here, 10 million colors. And of course there's no post-processing because it's all water. The print speed is they're saying it printed this guy in about four to six hours, which is actually not bad. It's somewhat on par with what um, I'm personally getting on my normal printers. But yeah, all color. Now also the way it works is the color resin is only used on the outside and the inside of the resin is used white, like a filler, and of course the outside is like a water washable. So the way you buy the resins will be, you know, you'll kind of buy them differently. You can see the specs here, the dimensions, the build volume, we've got the resolution of the screen here, so the layer thickness is 20 UM, but yeah, you look at the 200 UM, uh, you know, we'll see. They're saying they can think, they're saying they can get up to maybe 100 UM, we'll see on that one. Of course, there's your white clear and support, and then the CMYK. Now, they don't know exactly how much each resin is going to cost right now. More to come later on this printer, but this is one I'll be following closely because you want to talk about disruptive. I just talked about another printer that's much more expensive that does this kind of thing. For 10000 this one's going to be maybe a couple thousand that does the same thing. Yes, definitely industry disrupting right here for sure. Okay. So here we have an awesome booth. So this was printed in one piece, all resin, not FDM. Oh wow. Uh, not sliced up, just that is. And to print something this big, you need a large printer. And that is over here. I wonder if they'll let us, they'll let us open it, right? You can open it. Yeah, okay, thank you. We can open it, oh, okay, so thank you. here we have, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure this is the largest resin 3D printer in the world. Uh, I don't remember how, remember how big the build plate is on this thing? I know it's, it's massive. You could probably print a chair on it in resin. And could you imagine a vat clean for this? <laughs> I don't know how much that would cost in resin, yeah. but I'm sure it would be the most exp expensive yeah. back clean in the history. I don't know how much this costs, but um, you know, if we all pull in together, we, you know, all of us the community, we could buy uh, one. 17k. 17,000? Yeah, 70k, yeah. Oh, 70. 70, yeah. 70. Yes. Sorry, yes. So, uh, abandoned buying your car in your house. Yeah. You could just live inside of it, it's heated. Yeah. And print your car in your house. And print your car in your house. Eventually, yes. you know, it's just ignore the fumes and the, you know, and all that stuff. It'll be fine. So if you think that you have your great 3D printing wall with all your shelves, uh, you might be wrong. Because this probably is the most compact system I've ever seen. And if you watch, you'll see that arm over there zip back and forth and kind of maintain all of these different printers going off at the same time. This is something crazy. I guess I could definitely see this being if you want to compete with um, injection molding here in the in the you know in the states or in Germany, you could heavily invest in something like this one, and I bet you could pretty much produce parts cheaper than what anyone could get them, you know, by shipping to China, and really own an industry in your area with something like this. See, this kind of stuff when I see it, I get intimidated. Yeah. Just think, oh man. <laughs> If I, was, if I was retired and I had no other life, I would do this. And then here's the container ship. This ship, if you don't know, actually goes across the ocean and delivers all the filament. It's the actual size of the ship. There's just, you know, millions of them. That's a true story, if you don't believe it. I don't know. Everyone is talking about new features and 
how strong they are and whatever, and how just Bamboo Lab show um, how great it is to have a, a 3D printer, a filament 3D printer. Um, they're not even showcasing their printer, almost, no? Yeah, and like, do they have all about the experience. It's all about the experience, you just play. Yeah, <laughs> you know? just play. And it's just fun. And the, the, the message is really strong, is having a bamboo stand. Yes. You know, it's it's really different. For, for well, that's the whole goal, right? With them is it's not yes, about it's I not about most three D printers. It's about building your three D printer yes. and fixing it. Yes. And their brand is about yes. only about the product. Yes. A very good message. I think the most important thing if you have an FTM printer mm -hmm. is you must print shelves. <laughs> if you don't print storage and shelves with your FTM printer, I don't think you're doing it right. Look at those though. Hi. I'm here with Coco with Elegu and who, they have the new Saturn IV 16K. Yeah, 16K, yeah. Actually, you, we all actually see in front of here is with a very clear seal print, the 16K. So, oh, yeah. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, so which nice. actually shows the biggest, uh, you know, update okay. so. from upgrade from the, you know, Saturn IV Ultra, currently, I mean, the best seller version yep. right now. And so actually the biggest uh, upgrade is we got like the LCD uh, screen resolution you know, upgrade from the 12K to 16K. Yeah, and that screen resolution is yeah. 14 by 19 and the other one was uh, 19 by 24, was that right? 12K, yeah. Yeah, 12K. So from 12K to 16K. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Also biggest uh, change for this part is about the resin tank. Uh, the resin tank we, this time for the 16K, let me take it off. So you will see two conjection points here. Yeah, right there. Yes, here. So actually this uh, red tank we has the built-in building heater. So means um, Built-in vat heater. Yes. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, so actually it can get the resin. I mean, after you pure the uh, resin in, it will uh, heat the resin uh, temperature up to uh, to the ideal temperature for 20, printing, which is like 25. 25, 25, 25, 25 degrees Celsius. Yes. Yeah, and sorry. also the other part is about the, uh, okay, the modification part. So this part, actually you will tell, we got like two, you know, extra part, which is, you know. Yeah, very nice. If we want to, yeah. Yeah, take off the print with one hand. Yeah, well, so it, it won't fall be, anymore. See, yeah. look how scary I'm getting. Yeah, <laughs> because we get the garbage back from the Centauri. Yeah. Uh, yeah but, uh, Here's the from original. The one. Fall, so, yeah. so, it's a little bit scary right there. <laughs> yeah, I might lose it. The only other thing I'd love to see is this right here mm -hmm. moved up to the front, or at least up here on the side. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I know. It's like the number one complaint that us, you know, you, us people, uh, users or YouTubers want is mm -hmm. we always want that USB more. I know it's it's this has the ability to send prints mm -hmm. over the internet, but sometimes you don't, and it's nice to have the USB up front. But yeah, that's yeah. the one complaint. It's small, very small. Okay, thanks for the recommendation. I will also like to share with the team. Yes. <laughs> Look at this, we, we gotta make friends. Yeah, well. <laughs> so here's something really cool that I know about the Form 4, and I learned this when I was at uh, Rapid CDC in California. So they had one that was completely taken apart at their booth, and the LCD is textured. It's textured so that it acts like ACF film, but it's all glass, so it's like it doesn't have any of the drawbacks of ACF and all oh. the benefits. Also, the, uh, the crystal inside the LCD is a patent that they own, and it's specifically designed so that it can handle really, really high UV light and never die. So this is an LCD that will outlast the machine. And okay. not only that, but the UV power coming from this is about four times more powerful than what we have on like the Elegoo AnyCubic printers. So this can print materials that we can't print on any other printer, like almost 100% um, rubbers and, uh, and stuff that you can kiln and turn into basically uh, uh, like ceramics that we just can't even touch in our world. So it's a little bit more expensive, but there's some reasons why that make these printers very unique and very awesome. Hello, I'm here with Andrews with Amer Amer Labs, sorry. Right. And I want to ask you a couple questions about your resin. Okay. The first one being, which one is your favorite resin out of all of them? That's a tough question. Uh, but, you know, the most popular one and, uh, of course, it's my favorite too, is the resin for miniatures. Because it's such a cool application. It captures the details well, but it's also really flexible. 
So if you uh, drop it, it doesn't break easily. And that's the TGM 7? This is the TGM 7 resin. Yeah, this is a great resin. It's really hard to make a resin that's both accurate and flexible. And this one is very flexible and yeah. also very accurate. How long did it take you to come up with that? Ooh, it probably took around a year of around development. Year. Yeah. Do you know about how many formulas in that year? Hundreds. Hundreds? Hundreds. Yeah. yeah, I imagine. And, uh, with resin development, the interesting thing is that we have you know, developed the formulation, then we tested quite a lot with different environments and how humidity reacts with the resin and so on and so on. And with this resin, we were almost ready to launch. And then we noticed that humidity changes the flexibility. So oh. if, if it's like a dry air in the room, yeah. it becomes more brittle. And I'm so, in Utah where it's really dry. So Yeah, and then we scrap the formula and we have to start basically from the start and That's figure out what's, what's, which component causes that and change that and, and reformulate everything. And basically it took us like six more months. That's crazy. Because yeah, yeah I printed with this resin in Utah where my, the average humidity in my house is about 20%. It's very dry. And I have not had any issues with it uh, over sitting on my shelf for a year. It's been yeah. about a year. And it hasn't dried out, it stays nice yeah. and flexible. And there, I have ones that are primed and non-primed. So the non-primed exposed to the elements. Yeah. And it has remained flexible. Yeah, and when we test the material, we post-cure it in quite powerful custom-made UV curing chamber. We yeah. post-cure it for one hour. So, one hour? Yeah, just to get to the more or less final property. Yeah. And know that it's flexible. Because and it stays others flexible. do like five minutes and they say, oh, it's flexible. Yeah. But when you leave it on the shelf, like it will get burnt. Yes. Right? And with TGM7, it stays Flexible. flexible. That's important. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you that question, but you answered it for me. <laughs> and that was going to be, you know, how, how long can you cure it before you lose flexibility? Yeah, because so. I know that's a thing with other resins. Yeah. Flexible resins, if you over cure them, and over curing is 30 minutes. Yeah. And they lose their flexibility. So if you've done an hour and you're still yeah. getting the flexibility yeah. you want, yeah. that's something even, crazy. Even I've never even tried curing it that long, by the way. Yeah, and even with time, um, when we just print it, cure it for one hour, and try to like stretch it. Yeah, it uh, breaks at around sixty percent of its elongation, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, when after a year or so, when it stays and it continues to cure inside, yeah. it still keeps around thirty-five, let's say, percent of elongation. So That's it still good. doesn't get that brittle. It's still better than some ABS-like resins. Yeah. That's really good. I'll have to definitely print some more of it. I've, I've had one bottle that I bought when it first released, yeah. and I printed it, I printed it all the way through, and that's the last time I've used. But I'll have to get some more yeah. of it and do some uh, yeah. A/B testing, especially yeah. with maybe some of the other flexibles. No, it's, I always say it's a bit more expensive than other resins. Uh, we you get, get what that you pay a lot, for. but and I wouldn't print terrain with it. Yeah. Uh, but when you print a miniature like that with, with the standard resin, it costs like 15 cents. Yeah. With ours, it's maybe 60, 80 yeah, cents. Yeah, barely anything. Like for those that you will play with or paint and go to competition and travel with the miniature, I think it's worth paying like 50 cents more for, for a miniature. Well, you think about it, right? So if I paint, if I print this miniature, and if it's, you know, like say it's, let's say if it's even two cents more for this one versus another resin, and I spent three hours painting it, exactly. or if you're a true professional and you're spending uh, several days painting it, like you don't want it to break, yeah. you don't want it to fall and break, because the money is in the paint job, not exactly. in the resin and yeah. not in, in the, the print time. time. In the time, right? It's in the painting. Yeah. You want the best, but that's also where quality comes into important, because yeah, you can have really flexible, but to also have the quality for like to win a paint yeah. show, if you're not getting the fine details, it doesn't matter how good of a painter you are, you might not win just because your base model isn't good enough. And you're not gonna be able to see it on camera, but very beautiful detail. I'm here at the Frozen booth with Zeth, and I'm gonna do a quick one minute interview. <laughs> All right, Derek. so first thing I just wanna know is which resin is your favorite resin? My personal favorite your right personal now favorite. is the rigid PCGF leg. So it's very stiff, very rigid, great for great surface finish. Uh, great dimensional accuracy and just produces beautiful parts. That's this stuff right here? No, it's this one right here. This one right here. The turbo prop, yeah, and the drone. But the ABS like, if you're looking for a faster, uh, dimensionally stable resin, this is a really good, really good one. What's Huge like, upgrade on the original ABS like, sorry. What's the uh, exposure time per layer on this one about? Roughly like eight to nine seconds. Eight to nine seconds? Normal layers. Yeah. That's pretty high. And that's even on the Revo? Yeah, Revo. Because yes. the Revo's got a powerful LCD yes. on yeah, it, or pretty, a powerful light delay. Pretty strong, pretty durable. That's pretty good. I actually haven't used this one yet. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, check out the service finish. It's beautiful. To my beautiful. List. Remember the parts I was showing you the other night? Yeah, that's their printer. That's that one. Yeah, I'll have to try some of that. Absolutely. Well, let's let's go over to the Revo real quick. I'll ask a couple questions about this one. All right. So I have a Revo at home. Yep. And I haven't finished my review yet. Sorry. Okay. 
No problem. But out of the Revo, you have one. Yes. What is your, I guess, same thing, favorite aspect about it? I love the size of the build plate, and I love the uh, the heater. It's a nice touch. Yeah, it's um, a nice I just touch. feel like it's the perfect form factor. You know, I have the Mega, I have the Minis, I have all of them. Okay. So for me, it's the perfect form factor. It's the easiest to use. The knob up here is great. Uh, uh, your favorite? So this is your favorite? It's the one I print on the most. For sure. the most? Yeah. I like the time lapse function. It's kind of a. I actually haven't used that yet. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll it. show you after this. Okay. Pretty neat. Uh, and also being able to check on it from my from my house and see like take a snapshot and see how the print's actually going. Obviously, that's a few hundred layers in. Yeah. But if it's detecting a failure before then, it'll say, "Hey, high risk failure detected. Do you want to pause? Or do you want to stop the print?" Yeah. And you're so like, no, it'll I'm get, gonna you'll get going. notification. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So the, sensors are yeah. useful. And then uh, I think for me the best part of this one versus the other one is the integrated heater. Agreed. And it's got a this one's a chamber heater versus a vat heater. Yep. And there's some contests on the internet about which one's better. For me personally, uh, well, it's hard to say which one's better because they both say. have their good and pros. Yeah, pros and cons for both. Pros but and cons. I, I've I've personally used a chamber heater like this one because I like the. For me, I like the prints to be hot. The build plates to be hot as well. To be yeah. hot, yeah. While it's sitting here, I think it allows the resin to drip off more. I agree. So when this print is done, it's much cleaner, and I'm losing less resin. That's exactly. what I like about it. Wait, less waste. Less waste. And the other thing I like about it is if I'm in a really cold environment, getting the entire chamber hot is a thermal battery. Absolutely. So I notice if, it, if the temperature changes a lot, I get less variation in the vat than a vat heater does. Uh, yeah, less, less lines throughout the print as well. Yes, that's sure. been what I've noticed out of it. But a vat heater is obviously still very efficient and I, they have their own pros and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Do you know if you might be coming up with a vat heater in the... Might that, be in the future. Might be, yeah. That might be in the cards. <laughs> Your boss over thinking like, da 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 da. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yeah, might be in the cards. All right. Uh, is there anything else? Well, other than the lifting, you know, this hole. But yeah, that's... I like that a lot better than the lift and set aside deal. But yeah, still, still a great machine. Yeah. I like the light. Light's handy for you know sometimes it's dark. Oh, I got all the blinds closed in the printing area to prevent you know UV light. So yes. that's a nice touch. Uh, the odor reducer, as I like to call it, is a nice touch. Not sure about like VO, VOC efficacy, but it definitely yeah. does help reduce the fumes reduce the a wee bit. There you go. Yeah. There's one thing I have to do this. Sorry. There's one thing I don't like about the Revo. Let's hear it. What I don't like about the Revo is when it's printing, the uh, screensaver comes on. Yes. You can set the time. Yeah, adjustable. but it doesn't let you set it to infinite. Infinite, I agree. So yeah. if there's ever an update set to infinite, I like that better because when I come and I check on my printers, you want to you don't want to have to touch. I don't want to have to touch. You want to be able to check it from a distance. No, I understand. And I understand. Uh, everything with this printer and I, and I printed maybe uh, two hundred thousand layers on it so far. Wow. Is that's the only complaint I have. Wow. So far. Good to hear. Yeah. It's pretty minor. Yeah. I think we might be able to fix that. It's a pretty minor. Yeah, we might uh, be able to fix, uh, fix that, one. that one. Other than that, it's been a great printer. I think I've my success rate on it is probably around ninety eight percent, maybe ninety nine percent. The only failure I had on it was one calibration piece when I first got it, and then I re-leveled it the way I like to level it. With, which, your, with your tool that presses down on yes. it? Yes. Yeah, I think sweet. And it's the only auto, well, it's not the only one, but like, this is auto leveling, but it's the only auto leveling that I'm aware of, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that doesn't force it to auto level on every single print. No. It only does it when I run the, the auto level process. Correct. Yes. And that's crazy, because every other one with auto leveling, every time I start the print, it's like a minute. Wasted time. So if I do a dry yeah. print, I have to wait one minute for the auto leveling process to go through, because it does it every single time. And I've also noticed that leveling is different every single time. Yeah. So if I measure it. On this one, when I level it and I measure it, and I'm done, uh, 30 prints later, 40 prints later, everything on Z measures exactly the same. One That's of my good. favorite things about yeah. the, the only auto leveling printer I've tested so far that does that. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. And I think that's it for now. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Maybe not the best first layer on this printer. <laughs> I like that sound. Yeah. <laughs> the sound of pain. Yeah, the sound of pain. <laughs> I can do it. Can do it. <laughs> we'll see if we can. Maybe we'll check back on it later. See if it if it yeah. burned through it or not. It's a pellet machine, though. Yes. Right? Yeah, it's very different. All right. So if you ever want a big lead screw, that's wow. Look at that. Imagine putting that in some of our printers. Jeez. There's the brand. If you're looking for like a good aftermarket one, maybe look at these guys, because wow. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you could, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as our other social media. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.